Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Um, let's say hello to our guest, uh, Mr. Nika Gule, Public Affairs Analyst. Good morning, Mr. Agule. Good morning. All right. Thank you for having me this morning. The story we're talking about today is one that we're too familiar with. You know, Nigerian students abducted. Um, the Boko Haram terrorists or their kidnappers releasing a video um, with the um, people abducted, you know, crying for help, stating where exactly they are, what has happened, and any ransom demands. Right now, the students of the um, College of Agriculture and Animal Sciences in Bakura, um, who were abducted on Sunday night, you know, were seen in a video asking for 350 million naira ransom within 24 hours or that they might be killed by these terrorists and that they were currently at a place where all the kidnapped students were buried, you know, maybe because they were not, you know, rescued or that um, the ransom demands were not met. So, Mr. Agule, what do you think about the story? And do you think this is something that is becoming tiring with Nigeria's media space, seeing the frequency of these attacks? Okay. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for this uh, question. Uh, what I think about this story is that the story is, is very disturbing. Uh, first and foremost, let us understand that the president of Nigeria, the president of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, looked the nation in the face directly and told the nation that the kidnapping, the school kidnapping that happened was it in Niger State some months ago will be the last school kidnapping in Nigeria. And since the president made that statement, we have had several school kidnappings thereafter. One would expect that if a president looks the citizens in the face and makes a commitment, that he actually has the mind to follow through on that commitment. The president does not go to fight bandits or kidnappers himself. But as commander-in-chief, he has commanders that he's giving orders to, to carry out his intentions. And if those commanders are not delivering on the president's promises to the nation, one will expect the president to take action against those commanders. And we are not seeing that. And because we are not seeing that, kidnappers, bandits, terrorists, all sorts of criminals in Nigeria have become emboldened. And they have the temerity to come to schools, kidnap students, and are demanding for ransom. Okay, now, let us also see that there are two aspects to this. The government's job was to prevent that kidnapping from happening. But now that the kidnapping has happened, what is the government's response? What is the security agencies doing? Because if the security agencies don't collect intelligence, Storm the place where the hostages are being held and give the kidnappers two choices. Either they surrender, or they are killed. We cannot see the end of this kidnapping. If the government allows kidnappers to take students away or anybody away and are demanding ransom, these kidnappers calling, they are using telephone numbers to call. In this age of technology, we can pinpoint, the security agencies can pinpoint exactly the spot where that phone call is being made. And we are not seeing such responses from the Nigerian security agencies to trace where kidnappers are and the hostages, storm the place and kill them or arrest them if they give themselves up. We are not going to see the end of this kidnapping. So, Mr. Agule, this is my mind about this story that has broken. Mr. Agule, is it that we cannot or we have chosen not to? Because 
uh, on the daily trust, it says um, it, there's a daily update on the number of days that uh, students have been in captivity. The Salihu Tanko Islamic School, Tejina, 81 days. Federal Government College, Beninyari, 64 days. Bethel Baptist High School students, 46 days. Um, so how, and, and, and this is what I need to understand when you know, we continue to have these things happen, is it that the government cannot locate where these people are for 80 days, for 60 days, or the government maybe just doesn't care anymore. It's maybe as, you know, it's also having the same fatigue with regards to these kidnappings as other Nigerians are. Well, it is only the government of Nigeria that can tell us, the citizens, why they cannot locate lo the location where kidnappers are holding Nigerian citizens. I think there is a case where there's this school that had travelers as young as three years old. I don't even know if those ones have been released now. That we are also taking into captivity. It is for the government to explain to Nigerians why it is unable to deal with this kidnapping. But, but from my own perspective, looking at this thing from a citizen point of view, I think the government of Nigeria is overwhelmed. They, they, have, they have run out of ideas, and I, I, I think as they have even succumbed to these kidnappings. But it is a shame that that should happen, because for many years now, for over a decade, the defense has been taking the lion's share of Nigeria's budget year in, year out. We are committing the biggest allocation in the federal government budget to, to defense and security. State governments also putting money into security. But if we are not getting results from all of these monies that are being spent, then the government has to explain to Nigerians why the situation is not being arrested, but rather getting what ordinarily we should be spending a lion's share of our budget on education and health care and infrastructure and things like that but we are spending our budget to buy bullets and guns on security and yet nigerians are not secured in nigeria of today if you have not yet been kidnapped it is because the kidnappers have not turned their attention to you. Because if they want to kidnap you, nothing will stop them from kidnapping you. How can we live in a country that has this kind of breakdown in security? Yeah, Mr. Agule, mm -hmm. um, you, you, from what you're saying, you know, said the, the government needs to explain to Nigerians why it's taking so long or why it's failing. But Nigerians don't seem to be asking these questions. And I'm going to go back to when we had the first major kidnapping. The whole world uh, almost shut down because, you know, uh, during the Chibok girls kidnapping in 2014, um, in the uh, previous administration. But with the current administration, we've seen these things happen almost every month. And it doesn't seem like a lot of people care anymore. And so, Mr. Gole, who is the Nigerian government meant to explain to? The National Assembly also is not asking the Nigerian government any questions. You see, this is what happens. When a situation is not arrested, it becomes normalized. So the, the thing is, literally before now, if Amraba shot somebody, you know, it's a thing, oh wow, the whole place was coming down, and uh, everybody was, you know, breaking the story, every news outlet breaking the story and all of that. But we have allowed the situation to degenerate to a point now that killings are no longer seen by Nigerians as anything in the extraordinary. When we hear that bandits have kidnapped people, terrorists have killed people, it, it, people just feel it's normal. 
And it is a shame we have got to that point where life means nothing in Nigeria. And this situation needs to be arrested immediately. You talk about the National Assembly. I personally, as a citizen of Nigeria, believe that we don't have a National Assembly. We don't have a National Assembly. This democracy that we copied from the United States has the National Assembly as a check on the executive arm of government. The National Assembly is like a brick header in a Ferrari because the executives have been given a full car like a Ferrari with a turkey. But we also need to have a brake so that if the executive are trying to crash the car, the brake pedal is used. But in Nigeria, the first thing that the executive does is to disable the brake. Disable the brake of that Ferrari. And they are driving the Ferrari without a brake. The result is going to be an accident. And that is where Nigeria is heading. That the executive arm of government ensures that their lackeys were placed in position as leaders of the National Assembly. We have a National Assembly that has oversight function over the executive, and they are not doing their work. Instead of getting the president and charging him to take care of security or they will impeach him, this same National Assembly is currently discussing a bill that we jail for 15 years families of kidnapped victims whom the security have done nothing to release and are trying in their own personal effort to try and gather money, pay ransom, and release their people. The National Assembly of Nigeria is making a law where these same families that are already traumatized because their own people are being held hostage will be jailed for 15 years for attempting to pay ransom. Can we say we have a National Assembly? I don't think we have any. So, Mr. Agule, um, let's talk about the challenge, specifically about you know, the education sector. Um, and I want to ask you, do you think it's high time that the federal government declared a state of emergency in the education sector in Nigeria? Did you, did you talk about education sector in Nigeria? Yes. Sorry, I crack. Yes. I am asking that in the light of these um, attacks on schools, especially in the northern part of the country, do you think it's high time that the federal government declares a state of emergency on the education sector? It is high time. Your question is apt. It is high time that the federal government should declare emergency in many sectors in Nigeria. They need to declare emergency in the security sector, declare emergency in the electricity sector, where a, a, a nation that needs 200,000 megawatts of electricity is being given only 4,000, which will never develop the economy. We need a state of emergency in the healthcare sector, where Nigerians are just scavenging and using stress health methods to take care of their health. And we need a, a state of emergency in the education sector, as you have rightly said. It is unfortunate that the government of Nigeria, in spite of the current threat of kidnapping, has taken no step to secure schools. Mm -hmm. The government needed to take simple steps. For instance, if the government has a central command uh, center where Schools have been given telephone lines, dedicated telephone lines in each school, so that immediately bandits begin to strike that school. The phone calls are made to that central command center. Security is sent there immediately, including air cover. Imagine that if bandits are attacking a school to kidnap students and they see an Air Force jet, immediately hovering over them. The bandits will flee. Or if they see the military and the police approaching that place, they will flee. But the government of Nigeria has not taken even simple steps like that, where they can put a communication system in place with every school giving a dedicated phone line to call 
for security response if their school is under attack. I mean, look at cases where you, you can kidnap up to 100 kids. The logistics of moving 100 kids away from school, even if you are putting them 30, 30 per bus, that is, that is, that is like three, four, five buses. How can you move all those children away in such a convoy? Or if it is on bikes, hundreds of bikes, and the security don't know anything about it, or don't chase after the bandits. So the government must stand up to its own responsibility. The constitution says the main duty of government is to provide security and welfare. And these two attempts are missing in Nigeria now. And it's high time the government must stand up to its responsibilities. Mr. Gule, you're speaking about um, an emergency response system. You're speaking of um, fighter jets, helicopters, you know, when kidnap uh, uh, situations are going on. Um, th I, I, that might be, you know, a lot, you know, for the current uh, Nigerian government. Um, but I think, you know, also, um, we might be being dishonest with ourselves if we say that the Nigerian government cannot locate where these, you know, uh, victims are. You know, before you send a fighter jet, you know, to go help out with, uh, you know, a kidnapping, um, do you think that, you know, the Nigerian government honestly does not know where these victims are? And now, just to bear in mind that Sheikh Ahmad Gumi, you know, had met with some of these bandits, had met with some of these criminals, so, you know, time and time again, and, um, you know, gotten feedback from them back to the Nigerian government. So, you know, while we're talking about sending fighter jets, do you think that it's also possible that they can also be located? I, I, it is very difficult to say that the government cannot locate the bandits. It's very difficult to accept that. Not in these days of technological advancement and, and information and communication that we have. Let, let, let's look at the case. I think this was the case of the kidnapping in Joss. The bandits did not only ask for money, they also asked for motorbikes, motorbikes. And the families of these hapless children provided them motorbikes. The government, if they wanted to know the location of the kidnappers, would have simply installed trackers. You know, these trackers that we install in our cars where you can track the car and know the a specific point the car is. If the car is moving, you can see the car moving. Yeah? Government could have installed trackers on those bikes before they were handed over to the kidnappers. And once the bikes were handed over to the kidnappers, the government can pinpoint with precision where those bikes are moving. And they can go to that particular spot, round up the bandits, kill them, or arrest them, depending on their choice. So I, I personally don't believe that the government is unable to locate the kidnappers. But the reason why the government is not fighting the kidnappers, that is the, the $1 million question. I cannot answer. Simply cannot answer that question. Because it's difficult to understand why the government uh, allocating the highest chunk of the budget to defense is unable to bring this insecurity under arrest. All right. I want us to talk about um, collaboration with um, the local community regarding you know, this ending this menace. Because... It's something that we've been advocating for a long time, that these bandits, no matter what, they have families within these communities. You know, I remember a particular situation where one of these bandits came online to talk about his victories, that's killing and attacking Nigerian military. And he mentioned in that video that before he um, proceeded with his attack, he first went to evacuate his wives and children who were in the villages, you know, put them in a safe place before he went on to attack. So that means that these bandits, even if they live in the bush, they have family members that live in these communities. So would you say that maybe it's lack of trust in our security agencies that do not let people open up, you know, in terms of information sharing to the security agencies? You, you, are, you are very correct. 
in the question you have asked. Uh, first and foremost, before I even answer the question, we have been discussing that is it impossible, even without the involvement of the communities, for the government a location where these bandits and kidnappers are operating. And we have said it's not. The government can locate these places. The government using, I mean, these people are using telephones to talk. Once you, you, you make a call, the, 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 the GSM company will tell you exactly the base station, the base station that is using, that is transmitting that call. They will tell you exactly the location of that, that where that call was making. We talked about trackers and all of that. So even without the involvement of the communities, the government on its own would have been doing their own bit by gathering intelligence, using modern means of communication to locate where these bandits and kidnappers are. But having said that, the involvement of the communities is that, like you really said, the communities are not confident. They have lost faith in the government and security agencies. And you will not expect the communities to start giving information to security agents who are not even willing or don't even have the body language that they want to attack the bandits. In some cases, it is the bandits that are even protecting the local communities. We have cases like that. So, depending on the communities, it's not going to help, except the government shows sincerity of purpose that convinces the communities that any information supply will be treated in confidence and will be acted upon. So far, the government has not shown the ability that we convince the communities to collaborate and cooperate with the security agencies. And, 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 and let's, let's look at another story that happened. I think it was yesterday, I was listening to Governor Masari of Katina State. And he was urging Katina residents to go and buy arms. Buy arms to come and defend themselves. Can you see the thinking in government circles? First and foremost, Nigerian laws do not uh, uh, approve of citizens to go and arm themselves. But here we have an elected official in the position of a governor saying citizens should break the law to go and arm themselves and fight bandits and kidnapping that the, the, the security of the communities is not the job for the government alone. And Governor Matari is only re echoing the words of the defense minister. The defense minister of Nigeria himself said that if bandits come and they are shooting one or two bullets, that communities should not run away. They should face them, raise them, and stop them. If these kind of messages are coming from the highest authority in government. It emboldens the kidnappers and bandits. It tells the kidnappers and bandits that the government has lost it. That the government is incapable to defend the citizens. So the government has turned to the defenseless citizens to defend themselves. And that is what is causing everybody now to come to Nigeria and kidnap. Because kidnapping in Nigeria has become big business. Kidnapping mm. in Nigeria is almost riskless. If you kidnap people, you are almost sure of getting the ransom paid to you. See, the security are saying, it's not our role alone to attack you. You need to go and save yourself by attacking bandits. Bandits that are armed with AK-47 rifles. You, senior government officials are saying, armless citizens should go and confront them. Where the army, the air force, the navy, the police, all of the security agencies collecting humongous money from the budget, a city, and looking. This is unbelievable. It is happening. So, okay. Mr. Agule. All right, Mr. Agule, we saw a story on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning um, that says fear grips Zamfara communities as new armed groups emerge. 
So when I read through the story, I saw that in Zamfara State, there's a new group of terrorists that are preaching to other terrorists to stop kidnapping school children and stop kidnapping, you know, um, civilians. They're saying that the new focus should be government installations and government officials. Um, I want to get what you think about this new dimension of, of terrorism in the country. Uh, well, if, if that happens, if that happens, it will be a good thing. Really? If, if, the, if the terrorists and bandits and kidnappers decide on their own volition that they want to stop kidnapping school children, other vulnerable people, they want to start kidnapping army generals, they want to start kidnapping governors, they want to start kidnapping members of the National Assembly, and even attempt to kidnap the president himself. You know, I, I believe if they start doing that, it's going to bring a resolution to kidnapping and banditry and events that is first of But I don't think that is going to be possible because these people are well armed. Hmm. When you see a, a, a governor moving, a governor is moving like with a battalion of... And who is a kidnapper that will go and risk his life to kidnap a governor? When you have school children who are defenseless in one school, in one remote location, that you can simply go and pack them away and get money. So I will treat that story with a pinch of salt. Don't think uh, the bandits and kidnappers uh, are stupid. So they cannot see soft targets and leave the soft targets and start facing army generals and governors and, and presidents and all of that. But, Let's see what happens, but I think it's going to be Yeah, well, you know, I don't, think, I don't think we should also describe it as a good thing, yeah, regardless of, you know, what it, it means. Um, Mr. Gulli, uh finally, um, I want you to speak on the silence from the president um, in, you know, the wake of these things. He's just returned from the UK on a medical visit. Um, he also doesn't seem to be saying much. Uh, actually, uh, uh, this week, I believe, uh, his, the president's son, Yusuf, is getting married. And so one of the uh, papers also reports that the president will be attending the wedding of his son. Um, but, but, and that seems to be, you know, painful to say, but it seems to be the current priority of the, you know, the president himself while they're Nigerian students and have been in captivity for months. I think we have lost uh, Nika Gule there, but uh, I think we'll, we should be wrapping up the conversation here. Um, these are not very easy conversations to have, you know, and mostly because of what these mean. Um, and a question, you know, that pretty much, you know, same thing with what I asked yesterday, you know, how come it doesn't seem like it's a bother, it's a big enough issue to anybody? You know, how come there's nobody who's really on his feet every day thinking of, you know, why they have not been able to rescue people who have been in captivity for 80 days, you know, some of them 60, some of them 40 something days. Um, why, you know, is nobody really, really bothered, you know, on that level? It, and it really, really hurts. But we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're talking cancer in children, and we're going to be uh, joined by someone from the Dorcas Cancer, Cancer Foundation uh, here in the studio on The Breakfast. Stay with us.